Just talk to us a little bit. Ransomware, well, ransom attacks haven't died down, but it feels as though companies have some of the protections in place to stop them having to hand over crypto or whatever they're being asked for. Exactly. It's rare we get a good news story associated <laughs> with ransomware, and so it was encouraging to see our results this year in terms of ransoms being doled out. It has decreased significantly, as much as 40%. However, that's not to say that ransomware attacks are on the decline. They're actually on par or maybe slightly depressed of since last year. So what this means is that victims, representatives of victims and their insurers are deciding not to pay. And that's in part because of concern over sanctions, whether they're paying a sanctioned entity, but also they're better defended, most of them, to be able to recover without having to pay the ransoms. Jackie, I want to go back to some breaking news we got in the last hour or so, which moved markets. T-Mobile has disclosed that a hacker obtained 37 million customer accounts data, but it did not include payment or card information. The company is saying that it discovered the hack back on January the 5th. It traced that hack to the source and stopped it within a single day. They're investigating, but saying early indications that this threat was able to obtain the information through a single entry point serving customer data. It did not breach the company's systems or network. I'd, I'd ask you, please, for your reaction to that, you know, the information that we have. How common is that as a threat that corporate America, global corporates face? Yeah, unfortunately, we do see victims get re-victimized. I believe this is not the first data breach that has affected T-Mobile. And what this goes on to to prove is that the, the underground economy that is fueling data breaches, and including ransomware, is still thriving. There are still threat actors out there that are able to sell data for money, whether or not they encrypt the victim systems. And uh, there are vibrant markets selling user credentials for various purposes. And we cannot let our defenses down in mm. 2023, despite the promising news that we we'd uncovered in 2022. Can you tell us about the defenses being used and how we're able to keep up with ransomware with these new threats that corporate America does face and individuals. How's insurance protecting us now? How are we able to ensure that we feel we don't have to cough off the money every time? Well, part of it is that insurance companies are now being more stringent about the companies that they cover. Mm -hmm. And then in order to cover them, they must uh, incur some security practices. They must have backups is, is a big one so that if the systems do go down that the company can very quickly recover and resume resume businesses it's not foolproof um, there's no organization or company that is immune unfortunately and companies need to have a plan what happens if they do get attacked how are you going to handle it from a legal PR as well as a security standpoint and go back to the roots of how crypto is involved in all of this, because much of the aggravation from the crypto community is that it's always tarnished with money laundering, speculation, and you know, used for drug money, etc. But the whole beauty of crypto is that you're meant to be able to see where it goes. How much is the washing still happening? How are we able to ensure that the money is moving and, and we're able to see who's actually at the bad acting front of this? Right. We've actually uh, calculated this year that uh, illicit cryptocurrency use reached an all-time high. However, only 0.24% of all cryptocurrency activity was illicit. Mm. And so while the raw numbers did increase, overall, it is a very small fraction. And we're only able to calculate that because of the transparency of cryptocurrency in the blockchain. And be, that also enables us to track bad actors, to recover funds, to pinpoint which cryptocurrency exchanges are, are rogue or uh, be able to dismantle them like we did uh, like the Bits Lotto exchange yesterday, which was taken down as far as an international action dismantled by international law enforcement agencies. Um, also the Hydra Darknet marketplace, which was taken down. So we're able to have these successes because of the traceability. And it's only a small fraction of the overall cryptocurrency activity today. Jackie, we started the year with a fascinating conversation with Jen Easterly, the director of CISA, and her message at CES was the private sector has to do a lot more, right from when you're designing your product at its origins through to how you conduct business. That's why she was there in Vegas, to kind of get that message then. Do you see the private sector doing enough 
to ward off the threats that you yourself are warning about? No, I, I really view this year's findings of 2022's ransomware payments on the decline as uh, a representative of public and private sector efforts working together. We have your government entities doing takedowns and sanctions. We have private sector partners, insurance companies tightening uh, as far as what they're willing to pay, being adher uh, adhering to, to uh, sanctions concerns, as well as the research community that is actively finding vulnerabilities in the encryption that these ransomware actors are using. And it really is that fine balance of not vic um, not pe penalizing victims, but mm. being able to help them when needed. Um, it, it's, it's been a really phenomenal public and private sector effort, and we rarely get the opportunity to ha quantify what that impact is.